Welcome back everybody to the world's worst fishing lure making TV. Uh, we've got several things on the on the uh, table today. We kind of did some uh, cleaning and some mold reorganizing, which I guess I could show you all that after a bit. Right now I'm uh, actually letting the molds heat up. I'm going to be pouring uh, one of my favorite gizzard shad colors. I call it gray gizzard. And uh, I'll kind of show you all the color build on that once we get there. The molds are still heating up. But uh, I'm not going to show you the whole pour because that's not really the... Uh, uh, what we're doing on today's video, but I already had this going and uh, figured I would take y'all along. So what we're going to be doing today is uh, showing you guys a neat trick, okay, right, with with some open pour worm molds. Oop, if I can get my thumb around it. Here we go. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using gravity, okay? We're going to set these molds up on a pitch. Instead of pouring them flat, we're going to set them up on a pitch, on an angle, and let gravity pour the pattern for us in sort of a laminate pattern, okay? So instead of doing just straight flat laminates, we're going to be doing angled laminates, gravity laminates as I like to call them, to kind of show you how you can uh, imagine greater and think outside the box a little bit using something as simple as just tilting a mold to get the plastic to behave and layer in different ways. Um, so the two molds that we're going to be doing uh, this is the BTS rip worm right here. And then of course, I wanted to try it with the new AI bot worm. This mold right here is taking over. It's uh, one of Josh's new molds at AI. And uh, I just cannot say enough about all the great baits that I'm seeing out of this mold. Uh, so those are sort of the two molds that we're gonna be playing with mostly today. And uh, we'll show you those once we're done with these shads. So basically I took most of my open pour stuff and gave them their own shelf, okay? So we have, you know, several different sizes of swim bait. The fives right now are on the plate. Here's the fours, the jerk baits, the ribbon tails, a couple bots, a couple more of the uh, of the new small, uh, of the new smaller size uh, mojo worm. Uh, a lot of injection molds still over here and down there, and uh, some molds that don't quite have a home yet. So uh, still got some more cleaning up and organizing to do. Um, I, I basically put the. Uh, the uh, pneumatic vise down there. Here's a, here's a bunch of bot worms in that blue crawl. So anyway, trying to make the best use of the space that I have. It is a beautiful day for hand pouring. Nice, good weather here uh, in, in Florida. Well, at least in North Florida. It's about 70 degrees. The wind isn't blowing, which is good for me because it, it won't blow the, the plastic. So what's crazy is even the slightest gust of wind, right? When I'm trying to pour a thin stream of plastic, it will it will blow your stream of plastic, and um, that's just the worst. So I think we're gonna have pretty good pouring conditions, and uh, I'm pretty excited. So you know what we're doing today is, you know, re requires a lot of steady pouring um, to pour those molds at an angle. So I think we'll have pretty good conditions, unless something comes up, and then I have to postpone this filming. So we'll see. All right, everybody, so we already have the uh, first two colors in, just a light white pearl for the bottom. The vein is actually gold pearl, <clears throat> cut with a little bit of brown, a little bit of black, and a little bit of silver pearl. However, I'm gonna show you the color build on the top color. This is what gives it the magic. Just a few drops of black. One, two, three, four, five. All right, and that is a full one cup of plastic measured out in here. Haven't vacked it yet or anything. This is just straight, straight out of the microwave. All right, so basically a charcoal. We're gonna add about one drop of just straight watermelon to give it a little bit of green. All right, one drop of watermelon. And you'll see it, you'll see it green up. Yeah, there it goes. It's kind of starting to get green. Yeah, and here's what makes this really cool, all right? We want to add a smidge. I'm talking a mega smidge of brown pearl, okay? Like that much. Brown pearl. We're gonna do the same thing with silver pearl, okay? A little bit of silver pearl. All right, just a little bit. And then a little bit of gold pearl. And what this does is it, it basically just combines all these natural hues uh, from in, in, in the shad color that I want to get and 
what what I like doing is the vein color is is the gold pearl by adding a little bit of gold pearl to the top color it actually helps that vein color fade into the top color um, which which gives it a nice blended look about about the color effect so it, it kind of I, I guess it kind of transitions the colors together rather than having you know really bold um, I, I guess bold contrast between them right all right here we go we're gonna pour this color there's kind of what it looks like so there's a lot of gray to it even though it's kind of a black and green base this is why I kind of call it gray gizzard um, because depending on the lighting it looks very gray and then other times you look at it and you can really see that kind of dark watermelon green come out so um, Lots of illusion with it. It's beautiful. It's very natural. Oh, look at that. Don't you hate it when the plastic runs down the side of the cup? Gosh. Hold on. It's amateur hour out here. Oh my gosh. We're going to pretend that we didn't see that. Yeah, there it is. That is looking good. You can see how that gold vein kind of fades into that top, right? Because there's some gold pearl in that top color. And, uh, and if you kind of zoom out and look at it, you can see a hint of that green in the top. Absolutely awesome shad colors. So earlier I mentioned jokingly that something might come up to prevent me filming today. I do not have the battery charger for this camera, for my main vlogging, blogging video camera. Um, so I may not even have enough battery to get this done. I guess I lost it at the lake house last weekend when we did our uh, big fishing trip. So um, I may not can do this today, unfortunately. All right, guys, you know what? We're just going to go with it. We're going to crack a, a German Oktoberfest, and we're just going to film till the battery runs out. All right, so a thought that I just had is we'll actually try to make some worms to complement this color, right? So we're going to use the tilted pitch pouring method to try to make some worms that complement this shad color. So we're basically going to try to duplicate that color in what we're doing today. So essentially, I've got my molds just laid out on other molds, okay? Set them up at an angle, right? Bot worms, the rip worms, and uh, we've got our dead-on plastic uh, right here. So let's get started. But yeah, that is what we're doing. Okay, so again... We're going to build roughly the same top color. We actually have to pour these inverted because they're worms. So the top color is first. Two, three, four. So this is actually less plastic in this cup than before. Uh, so it's going to look a little different, but we're going to basically go by the same recipe. So yeah, a little bit of gold here. Basically our, our smidges of powders. Yeah, looking good, that's it. All right, I'm gonna try to do this on camera. We're basically gonna start the pour up here and basically pour a capsule at an angle, but it's the way that it kind of pulls up down at the bottom that to me gives it a really great effect. So I'm gonna kind of do my best here to, to show you, all right? So again, we're gonna start about right there Pour it down. Let the plastic run down. Yeah. Just like that. Okay? And what'll happen is it's actually gonna pull up down at the bottom, which is gonna make our later on laminate vein look really neat the way that it flows. Okay? So again, start up here, move it down. That was a little too much, but that's okay. And again, this is really hard to do on camera. My apologies. We'll try to try to get one a little bit smoother here. Yeah. All right, 
We're gonna let that set up for just a second. All right, let me show you what we have here, okay? You can see we basically have a capsule in there, but it kind of bunches up down here at the bottom, okay? That's gonna look really cool once the worms are finished. All right, so we went ahead and did the rest of them in that set. Now let's move over to the bot worm. All right, now we're gonna try it in the bot worm. We'll start it about up here. Yeah. Perfect. Exact same thing. And we're leaving the tails open uh, because those will have sort of the white pearl belly going into the tail. So yeah, I'm really excited to see these. First time I've poured this sort of uh, configuration in the bot mold, in the bot worm mold. So one more while we've got the camera rolling. There it is. All right, so the next step is to create the vein color, okay? So we're gonna start with a gold mica powder base, just gold pearl, all right? About like that, not too much, all right? And then again, the key to a good natural color is to dull your colors, right? Take the edge off, brown them up, gray them up, darken them, blacken them, whatever it takes to naturalize the color all right and we're even going to add a touch of black okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drip some black on the table and just kind of get some on the knife that way it's not really a full drop of black all right now we're talking all right now a smidge of silver pearl again this is gonna help that color blend into the top all right, and so it's sort of a dulled down brown off gold, I guess, right? So instead of being super bright yellow gold, like, like the base powder is, we've now turned it into that. You can see the color distinction. That's the key to getting these natural colors. All right, here we go. Now we're basically going to take the gold vein and let it run down the same way. We're maybe gonna start it not as far up, right? Maybe start it here, but we're gonna pour it down. Same thing. Pour it down and let gravity do the rest, okay? So what we wind up with is sort of laminate lines that aren't exactly straight. There's a little bit of curve to them, especially there at the end. And uh, I think it makes a really nice effect that is not what you normally see. Uh, it's a nice contrast to just straight three layer laminates. And um, I think there's some cool things, some really cool things that, that you can do with it. And again, this is, this is just letting gravity kind of take over and do the pattern for you. Here we go. Super cool. All right, and here is the butt worm. Here we go. Nice. This is such a cool effect. And it sort of mirrors the swim bait in the fact that the laminate doesn't go all the way to either end, right? And what I mean by that is this. If we look at one of the swim baits, right, the gold pearl doesn't really go all the way to this end and it doesn't go all the way to the nose. And um, this will be a lot like that in terms of the configuration of the colors. All right, so we have all of our swim baits over there that we did earlier. And as you can see, these are kind of starting to look like it. Just one more step left. That is the white pearl. Okay, so uh, again, going to try to do this on camera. Now we're just filling in the gaps with white pearl without trying to over, over pour it. Okay, just going to move up the body. Fill in the tail, maybe go back a little bit. Perfect, okay? That is the final step. So, we'll try it over here. We'll go tail first. Yep. 
Yeah. There's not a lot of room left, but you got to get that white pearl in there. And then, of course, we're, uh, we're going to fire the molds. Let's get everything gelled together nice and neat. So you don't want to over pour the bait because it's going to get hot. So anyway, that is what we're doing. Now let's uh, kind of move things over. Eh, well, I thought I could. Now we're going to do a ripworm. Here we go. Start from the tail. Work our way up. That seems to be a little bit, a little bit better for me here. A lot of work for a worm, but man, does it look cool when it really works out. So, you know, again, um, just trying to, just trying to imagine greater, right? What can you do with a worm mold? Well. The moral of today's story is you don't always have to pour it flat. There are uh, awesome things that you can do just by thinking in terms of gravity and how gravity will pull the plastic into the cavity. All right, now we've got all the worms on the hot plate. We're going to basically let them melt till they uh, basically sort of gel together. Take them off and uh, show you what's happening here. All right, here we go. Drum roll, please, without messing up the baits. Let's go ahead and pull one. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, we can see it right. So, oop, there's like a contaminant on the bottom. Okay, lighting is really bad. Hold on one second. Okay, now we're outside, and you can sort of see the color. You can sort of see the pattern. Yeah. You can see how that gold kind of comes down, right? And it's not a it's not necessarily a normal laminate. Look at that. Really awesome stuff. Yeah, you can really tell that those were poured with the same kind of colors. Awesome to see the same pattern in two completely different configurations. Really cool stuff. Hope y'all have enjoyed. Let's go look at the bot worms. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> Little four and a half inch drop shot worm never looks so shadowicious. Look at that. I love how it's virtually exactly like the swim bait. Which I guess, you know, no duh, pfft, Jones, it's the same recipe, but you know, just still seeing it in a completely different bait is still very, very rewarding, I will say. Question now becomes, which is your favorite? Do you like it in the swim bait better or the worms? Let me know in the comments below. All right, hopefully we have enough lighting left to show you all the bot worms. Yeah, look at that. Absolute shadowicious. You can really see it from the side, much like a swim bait. Sorry, y'all, trying to keep things in focus. It's, the lighting is really low. All right, everybody, I'm going, going to go ahead and film outro now. Good God, lighting's bad because I don't know how much uh, camera battery I have left. So what I'm going to try to do is if I, uh, if I have some battery left tomorrow, I'll try to get some footage of the baits again, uh, maybe in a little bit brighter light, uh, brighter light settings. Um, and then, uh, I'll definitely try to get a good thumbnail as well. Uh, yeah, now y'all can see me. Um, so anyway, we're going to kind of close the video out now. Um, if I can get some better footage tomorrow of, of the baits, um, we will definitely include that here at the end. But, uh, anyway, yeah. A really cool effect um, you know uh, if you've never tried it definitely try it start tilting mold start stacking things think about how you can get the plastic to run into your cavity a little different and uh, that'll open up a lot of options and I'm curious what some of you guys come up with I'd love to get some feedback um, maybe some tricks that y'all come up with that you know I haven't learned or, or that I don't know 
Um, you know, I would love to see what everyone can do. Um, you know, really just a simple idea, just tilting a mold and letting gravity do the rest, which is basically what we do in hand pouring. <laughs> we're allowing gravity to paint our patterns. So with that said, I think we're going to sign off. Uh, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We'll see y'all in the next video, and I hope y'all enjoyed. All right, as promised, it is the next day, and uh, we have a little bit better lighting because we have a lot of sunshine coming in the uh, fish cave today. So again, here was the uh, swim bait that kind of gave us this whole color idea, <clears throat> and uh, we'll try to get another uh, really good view of the worms. Yeah. Love how natural it is. Absolutely stunning stuff. Again, I hope y'all, oops, have enjoyed the video. Yeah. Really cool. Can't wait to see what some of y'all do with this. I know there's a few cats out there who will for sure uh, take this to some, uh, to some great, great, great levels and extremes. So anyway, moral of the story. Tilt your mold. Do cool stuff with your mold. Don't just pour it flat. And that's a lesson that I'm still learning. And uh, there's lots more yet to be discovered.